now we will talk about the motor functions of stomach but remember stomach has other functions like secretory functions and digestive functions right but right now we'll talk about motor functions of stomach right you already must be knowing about the musculature of the stomach right in histology lecture you must have done that stomach has basically uh, mucosa submucosa and muscularis externa and in muscularis externa unlike other part of gastrointestinal system it has three layers one additional layer because other part of the uh, gastrointestinal system has muscularis externa with outermost longitudinal layer of muscles then inner which is circular layer of muscle but in the stomach there is an additional oblique layer of muscles inside the muscularis interna innermost layer right secondly all the musculature in the stomach is smooth muscle why i am saying because if you compare it with the esophagus upper one third of the esophagus is striated muscles middle one third of the esophagus is striated and smooth muscle and lower one third of the esophagus is smooth muscle but stomach all striated muscles now when food uh, what are the three basic function of the stomach three basic functions of the stomach are number one storage motor function number two is mixing movement mixing movement and next is the propulsive movement but actually which help propulsive movement help the stomach to empty itself right so you call it yes what emptying of stomach arm um, of stomach okay let me make a smaller muscle then we talk about its different features anatomy of the stomach basic things you must be knowing that stomach is divided into which three anatomical regions yeah if the uppermost is fundus right then here is the body and here it is pylorus uh, antrum sorry body and then there is antrum and last part of the antrum which is the exit from the stomach that is called pylorus is that right so this fundus of the stomach body of the stomach antrum of the stomach and the exit point from stomach to the duodenum is called pylorus is that right and this area of the stomach where it is connected with esophagus there is lower esophageal sphincter which is normally closed to prevent the reflux and normally the smooth muscle layer in pylorus is also thickened and tonically almost closed is that right now when uh, we are eating food is initially stored in stomach right so that it can be gradually released as food is being processed by the small intestine by secretion and absorption right now for this storage purpose when food come from esophagus here i told you in the last section that when food is reaching here due to myenteric plexus right stimulation this part of the stomach will undergo receptive relaxation what kind of relaxation will be there receptive relaxation but as more and more food come stomach keep on relaxing right the second type of relaxation is called accommodative relaxation receptive relaxation is that let me differentiate receptive relaxation is when peristalsis from esophagus is coming down and along with the relaxation of lower esophageal sphincter upper part of stomach also relaxes right that is called receptive relaxation and that is through the myenteric plexus right but actually when food comes over here and more and more food is reaching stomach do you think pressure in the stomach goes up or down or remain the same it remains almost same because within physiological limit if you're eating within physiological limit right then what happen as you keep on eating more and more volume is coming here right that volume stretches the what is this stomach wall and that stretch activate sensory fibers through the vagus nerve to the central nervous system and then from there fibers come and in relax motor fibers come back and relax the stomach smooth muscle so 
actually stomach keep on increasing its capacity of course within limits so what happen as you are putting dumping more and more food in your own stomach right not only there is receptive relaxation there is also accommodative relaxation that stomach is going to accommodate more food this accommodative re relaxation is not a local reflex it is vago vagal reflex because of sensory pathways through the vagus as well as motor pathways through the vagus are you understanding me now what happen when more volume is there a little stretch on stomach wall will actually a, a produce action potential in the sensory fibers in the vagus they will take information to the where medulla is that right they will take the information medulla and from there the parasympathetic fibers motor fibers which come to the stomach their action will be reduced and you know parasympathetic is motor to the stomach and git when their actions are action potentials are reduced the less stimulation of the whole smooth muscle and myentary flexes of stomach and stomach gets relaxed is that right this is called accommodative relaxation is that right uh, normally a uh, stomach can store from 1 liter to 1 and a half liter of course exceptions are there but uh, usually uh, stomach human stomach can uh, take 1 liter to 1 and a half liter of food over there is that right now we come to the once the food is there right then how the mixing movement start right now i'm going to talk about the mixing movement I'm talking about this thing actually uh, in previous lectures i have told that in this part of the stomach there are special cells which are called interstitial cells of kajal interstitial stitial cells of kajal they act like a pacemaker as there is a node in the heart right and every in one minute they produce about around 3 to 4 what L slow waves is it right and usually those slow waves cannot produce significant contractility but at the at the top of the slow waves if there are spike potentials we have discussed in previous videos and that will produce effective contraction here now there are two types of contractions which are produced in upper mid section of the stomach right every 15 to 20 second those are right contractions which are produced there are about 3 contractions per minute because the slow wave basic rhythm of the stomach is slow wave electrical activity in the stomach is at the max 3 per minute is that right now when the contraction start here what you need to remember there can be weak contraction and there can be strong contraction now weak contractions are mixing contractions and strong contractions where contractions will help in emptying now let's talk about the weak contraction how the weak contractions work actually when weak contractions are produced they will compress stomach here and here is that right from both side now it will produce a slight indentation this part of the wall of stomach will dig into content of the food this will dig in then this constriction ring a sort of you can say constriction ring is produced here here and here now this narrow area constriction ring will move downward and distally you know the law of the gut is that right same principles of myentaric plexus right now every minute around 3 constriction rings are produced and these constriction rings initially which are weak constriction ring they move downward and towards the pylorus right from the body to the antrum to the pylorus and they take the content of stomach forward now what will happen to pylorus yes ma'am what will happen to pylorus it will it will open what do you think inhibited yes yes priya if this is what what type of contraction weak contractions are there every minute about 3 are produced and they indent like a constriction ring into the content of the food and they are moving sweeping towards from middle of the body to the antrum to the pylorus what happens to pyloric ring it does not open it's not everywhere the some constriction come and it should open there are exceptions to the laws also this is the one exception when mixing is going on it does not open rather it become little more tight now you may be thinking what is this thing 
but this is a very important thing you know what happened look here let's suppose according to your theory look here which is wrong that if it contract and it move down and it open all one and a half liter will go to duodenum can duodenum handle that much no so what really happens when stomach weak weak mixing movement start and the move downward it become even more tight so all the content of stomach which are sweeping towards here they will hit that and fall back what will happen that these contents of the stomach which are moving right ahead of this they are moving like this only those particles which are very small because it may be very narrow it become more narrow right they will all hit back and this and activity keep on doing for long time so what will happen all the contents of the food will get mixed with the gastric secretion this is called enteral pump because originally these waves become very prominent in the enteral region they start very weak or feeble from the body as they move downward they become slightly more prominent and their velocity become fast and intensity become more so what is happening that these constriction rings which are relatively weak as they move towards the antrum and pylorus the progressive will become slightly strong and slightly fast and contents are splashed against the semi closed what pylorus and very little material goes to duodenum right most of it will be what happened it will fall back it will not go into duodenum is it right now this is a mixing mechanism stomach is acting as a mixer it is mixing right and this uh, movement of food is called retropulsion retro pulsion look when this ring start moving there is propulsion of food when food reaches here and splashes back that is retropulsion so this is what happens in stomach when it is mixing the its contents with the gastric juices any question up to this and how many movements are there about three movement or four movements per minute is that right now after we have discussed the mixing movement advantage of mixing movement is that for long time it will keep on doing like this until the contents of the stomach the food the food particles water and secretions they become semi solid paste like material when they become something like a paste then that then only that paste will be emptied here that paste is called what is it called kyme c h y m e kyme so stomach actually convert whatever you have eaten deliciously with very different colors and different type of combinations in the stomach eventually due to its mixing movement it will become kyme and kyme is a paste like material or semi solid semi fluid material depending upon the proportion of water and the solid component and uh, secretions from the gastro uh, with the gastric glands right this kyme will be gradually moving forward now this mixer is very important because every time when these uh, mixing movements are approaching rather than opening it become a little more tight so only very fine particles will move forward do you think there is a chance to too much overload that duodenum no is that right so this was something about which movement mixing movement and now we come to the after the mixing movement propuls a okay before i go to the emptying movement i want to explain another thing okay let me explain first emptying movement this is not much difference emptying movements are those movements in which these constriction ring become stronger and this time pylorus does not close significantly it still closes but not very narrow so actually in the stomach 80% of the time there are mixing movements or weak peristalsis and 20% of the time there are strong peristalsis so few mixing movement then one very strong peristalsis come and move this content very strongly and splashes against the pyloric sphincter and that when pyloric sphincter is a little open so if some paste is present some paste has been made that will be pushed into duodenum am i clear so what is the main difference in mixing movement and the uh, propulsive movement of or emptying of the stomach 
that makes you movements are weak and they are 80 percent of the time and propulsive movement or movement which empty the stomach right which are called enteral pump right these movements are strong and they are 20 percent of the time this is the right and all this mechanism ensures that only chyme should move to the duodenum any question up to this there's no question now another type of movement i want to mention that when you are fasting a hormone is produced called motilin what is that called motilin this can produce special type of movements every almost every 90 minutes when your stomach is empty or you're fasting right motilin hormone goes up in your blood and this act on the smooth muscles of stomach and it moves the stomach sometimes it produces rapid movement in the body of stomach rapid peristalsis in body of stomach and those are called mmc what is mmc migratory myoelectric complex migratory myoelectric complex don't tell anyone this is mixing movement or it is uh, emptying movement no it is usually an empty stomach is that right migratory myoelectric complex right this is produced by motilium motilin uh, sorry motilin this is a hormone right produced by the small gut another thing which i want to tell you about the hunger contractions when you are hungry for a long time right what really happens that their rhythmic contraction start in stomach right first of all before i go for that what is the function of this thing what is the function of this thing they, they are looking for any residual food to push forward that if still there is something right push it forward right now hunger movements hunger hunger movement in stomach occurs uh, when you have been uh, fasting for significant time and uh, this movement start peristaltic movement rapid in the body of the stomach right and sometimes there are multiple movements started and it go into tetanic contraction you're getting stomach is getting angry because there's no food is that right and it may produce even a little pain in the pit of this area what is that called hunger pangs p-a-n-g-s hunger pangs is that right so when stomach is full it moves when it is very empty it also moves and hunger pangs start about 12 to 24 hour after the last meal and within two three to four days it reaches to peak and then gradually dies out and remember hunger hunger pangs or the hunger contractions and when they become painful it is hunger pangs they are more strongly felt in young and healthy people because their GIG tone is high or hunger pangs are more strong when you have hypoglycemia am i clear there's no problem up to this now uh, that is electrical activity that is not related with the motilinum motilin right now we come to how the how the pyloric center open right now i'm going to talk about that thing right now i'm going to talk what are the factors which determine the stomach emptying you know who should control the rate at which empty uh, stomach empty itself who should control who is receiving this stuff duodenum duodenum is narrow so duodenum should have some mechanism to control the stomach so that stomach does not become stupid and put everything there you are understanding so the real powerful control of em emptying mechanism of the what is this stomach is mainly by the neural and hormonal mechanism from from duodenum and jejunum because duodenum and jejunum are dealing with the chyme which is coming and they have to properly digest the chyme and absorb the chyme and if too much stuff come here inappropriately too fast is the right can proper digestion and absorption occur no so actually the most powerful regulation of stomach emptying mechanism is by the duodenum it means duodenum and jejunum should have some mechanism to control the emptying and how to control the emptying 
Number one, it should be able to control the movement of these strong peristalsis plus it should be able to control the pyloric sphincter. Is that right? Now, let me explain under what circumstances, what are the factors which regulate the emptying of the stomach. As I told you, more powerful factors are from duodenum, but the weak factors are from the stomach itself. Right, now, here is your pyloric sphincter, this is lower esophagus, okay, now, I'm going to talk about the factors which determine how fast or slow stomach will empty its contents into duodenum. There are gastric factors, gastric factors which are weak and there are duodenal factors which are powerful. Let's talk first uh, gastric factors. Number one, of course, volume of the food. When you increase the volume of food, the rate of emptying slightly increase. Is that right? How? Why? What is the mechanism? That volume of the food is more, then rate of the emptying will slightly increase. What is the mechanism? Yes. Do you think when there is more food, it will put more pressure and the pressure will drive? No. Remember when you are putting within physiological limit, when you are putting more food, actually stomach relaxes and pressure in the stomach does not go up. Actually what happens, even though stomach relaxes, but stretch on the wall become more. So when you are eating more, you are putting more volume into your stomach, pressure in the stomach does not go significantly high, but stretch on the wall of the stomach goes significantly high. The more stomach stretches, smooth muscles more open, their calcium channels open and they produce stronger contractions. And when there are stronger contractions, rate of emptying becomes slightly more. Is that right? So one gastric factor is volume of food right second factor is that stomach produces gastrin you know gastrin is a hormone which is produced by the some specialized cell in antrum right g cells in antrum they can produce gastrin primarily gastrin is produced to stimulate the hcl secretion from the gastric glands but some people believe that gastrin also slightly increases the intensity and velocity of stomach contraction and of course you must be knowing that parasympathetic nervous system stimulate the stomach or inhibit the st stomach parasympathetic nervous system acetylcholine of course stimulates the stomach is that right because if someone is having a, a drug which is anticholinergic stomach will not contract well any question after this but really really the thing which you should understand very clearly is duodenal factor right duodenal factor and stomach emptying. Let's talk step by step how the duodenum control the stomach motor activity. Number one, let us suppose that from the stomach too much contents come here. It is overfilled. What is overfilled? Duodenum. It should slow down or accelerate stomach slow down naturally now there are three type three levels of mechanism by the nervous system number one there are whenever certain stimuli come to the duodenum stomach motor activity will be inhibited now these are neuronal so we call this enterogastric reflex what reflex and entero enterogastric reflex it is not reflux it is reflex neuronal this inhibits the stomach exactly how there are three levels of enterogastric reflex number one that when too much food come here time come here and it is stretched this area is stretched that will produce inhibitory neurotransmitters on the back through which mechanism what is this mechanism Myenteric reflex as because myenteric reflex is present throughout the gastrointestinal tract. So when duodenum become overstretched or there are certain stimuli which come to the duodenum, what duodenum will do? Neuronal response. 
what is neuronal response that stretch receptors in the duodenum will activate the ascending pathways of myenteric system which will produce inhibitory neurotransmitters in stomach and stomach movement will become slow and it will not dump further chyme into duodenum until duodenum deal with those situations am i clear secondly another way not only this is local reflex another reflex which is seen there is that some sensory fibers from the stomach uh, sorry duodenum they go up to sympathetic ganglion suppose here is central nervous system and this is sympathetic preganglionic fiber and here is sympathetic postganglionic fiber and let us suppose these are some sensory fibers now some sensory fiber from duodenum they go up to the ganglion which ganglion sympathetic ganglion right and in the sympathetic ganglion they stimulate fibers which are going back not to duodenum but going back to stomach and when sympathetic activity of stomach is increased stomach will motor activity of stomach will be inhibited does that right so it means up to now i have told you two reflexes the duodenum but through the myenteric reflex can inhibit motility of stomach and duodenum through the ganglionic reflex through the sympathetic prevertebral sympathetic ganglion prevertebral sympathetic ganglion it can lead to inhibition of stomach and still if it's really very much irritated more sympathetic fibers are stimulated and these fibers will take the information to the to the vagus sensory fibers in the vagus nerve they will take to the central nervous system and from there vagus fiber will come and inhibit the stomach now the reflex has become very long the reflex has gone through central control so duodenum knows how to slow down the stomach through local myenteric reflexes through reflexes through the sympathetic prevertebral ganglion or vago vagal reflexes which are initiated from the duodenum and inhibit the stomach am i clear now question is that the what are the circumstances which activate this reflex which reflex entero gastric reflex one thing is very simple that simply whenever there is over distension of there is over distension of duodenum these reflexes will be activated right but duodenum has many chemo sensors right osmo receptors chemo receptors so even if it is irritated by any means duodenum has irritation right it will inhibit the stomach motility movements of motor activity of stomach if there is too much protons coming here for example so much chyme is coming which is highly acidic right for example ph in the duodenum goes down up to 3 or 3 and a half duodenum is not happy with it so to want to neutralize the acid so to buy the time high acidity will stimulate the receptors in the duodenum mucosa and inhibit the stomach until bicarbonate in pancreatic juice and bile and uh, neutralize this acid even if chyme which is coming it is not isotonic it is hyperosmotic osmotic or very much hypoosmotic if such type of chyme come is it right where osmolality of the chyme is very much different from our body fluids osmolality it will immediately inhibit that you know why imagine that if very much hypertonic drink comes on this pathway and gid gets fully loaded with hypertonic drink what it will do it will absorb the water from mucosa is that right and reabsorption will not occur because hypertonic fluid suck the water from everywhere are you understanding me and that will produce hypovolemia fluid electrolyte changes in our whole system is that right or if very hypotonic fluid come this fluid will very rapidly absorb and again fluid electrolyte shifts will occur so duodenum has osmo receptors also right so what it does that if very hyper hyperosmotic or hypoosmotic fluids come to slow down the stomach 
so the stomach keep on producing juices and try to bring the osmolality near to body fluids and it deals that kind of fluid very gradually are you understanding what i'm saying right then even if uh, there are breakdown product of protein or fat digestion if too much protein digestion breakdown product come too much right improperly digested not properly digested it will slow down because it knows it need to digest them and it will take time or if too much fat come here right that can also irritate the mucosa it will slow down why because digestion of fat you need pancreatic lipases and bicarbonate and bile bile salts to emulsify so duodenum and jejunum have to work a lot on the fat so they slow down the stomach am i clear that is why when you take food rich in fat stomach emptying become very slow and digestion process become very slow but if you take it in protein rich in protein it will be little faster and if you take it carbohydrate it will be more faster that is why when you take too too much fat in the food you say it's a heavy food you are understanding because duodenum want to work and jejunum longer time to digest the fat and absorb the fat so they just slow down the stomach and it become heavy over there am i clear so these are the stimuli distension irritation high acidity too much hypertonic or hypotonic fluid chyme or too much partially digested proteins or fat right they will activate the enterogastric reflex which may be local reflex or through the sympathetic ganglion or through the vago vagal reflex all of these will slow down the stomach movement right plus tighten the pylorus so pyloric sphincter become tight and stomach emptying will become slow right opposed to that of course if there is too little kind of course reverse will occur if isotonic fluid is coming slowing down will not occur you are understanding that yes i am going to talk about that so this was about neuronal control through the neuronal system duodenum and jejunum control the stomach any question after this then there is hormonal control also right there is hormonal control also let me explain not only neuronal control but hormonal control also for example if too much acidity come okay first of all if too much fat come right number one through entero gastric reflex it will slow down secondly there are special cells here eye cells and they will produce what cholecystokinin they will produce a hormone called cholecystokinin now cholecystokinin has primarily two function number one cholecystokinin will go to the gallbladder and gallbladder will contract cholecystokinin cholecyst is what gallbladder kinin mean movement so gallbladder moving hormone so basically original function which was discovered of this hormone it contracts the gallbladder and bring lot of bile here with bicarbonates plus cholecystokinin also uh, stimulate the ACI and the exocrine pancreas and bring lot of pancreatic enzymes and including lipases so it can bile acids come here pancreatic lipases come here so they can digest the fat but because it this process takes long time especially pancreatic lipases work in alkaline environment so we need to slow down the stomach so cholecystokinin also has a receptor on stomach smooth muscle and inhibit them is that right so when that is why when you eat very fatty food it takes long time to digest one simple reason is the fats will float in stomach so they will take delayed time to reach here and once they reach here they slow down the stomach further am i clear then i'm talking about now hormonal control duodenum and jejunum control the stomach hormonally as well as neuronally now hormonally if too much protons come here then there are s cells here which will produce secretin primary function of the secretin is that it will activate the pancreatic ductal cell to produce more bicarbonate so that what should happen neutralization of the acid but secretin also act on stomach and slows down the stomach 
so cholecystokinin this also slow down the stomach secretin also slows down the stomach because in both cases duodenum and jejunum are buying the time is that right in first case to digest the fat in second case to neutralize the acidic content and then if fat and carbohydrates both come together too much fat plus carb another hormone is produced and that is called uh, GIP gastric inhibitor inhibiting peptide of course this name is telling that it will inhibit the it will inhibit the stomach gastrin gastric inhibiting peptide am I clear any question up to this now how to remember all these factors it's very easy one thing you know parasympathetic system stimulates the stomach and sympathetic system yes sympathetic system inhibits if you know this thing let's remember it like this that parasympathetic nervous system moves gastric yes emptying or gastric system now parasympathetic move for motilin motilin gastric mean or gastrin so these are three stimulating mechanisms if you remember parasympathetic nervous system moves the stomach move the gastric system so actually three things parasympathetic nervous system cholinergic plus move for motilin plus gastric system for gastrin right but now you remember other thing even though parasympathetic nervous system move gastric system but sympathetic nervous system secretly secretly yes inhibits gastric system do you think it's difficult to remember now what is here sympathetic nervous system also inhibits secretly secretin also inhibits is that right and gastric inhibitor GIP also inhibits now what is left one to remember is cholecysto cholecysto kinin so sympathetic nervous system secretly inhibit gastric system for cholecystokinin that's right for cholecystokinin so most of the questions which they form on stomach are movement of the stomach that they are mostly concerned that do you know the mechanism of emptying of stomach and how the duodenum regulate that is that right so if i ask you enterogastric reflex at three level number one local mentoric number two so sympathetic ganglia number three vago vagal through central system and if we talk about hormonal control what are those control if there's too much fat coming cholecystokinin is going to inhibit if too much protons come secretin is going to inhibit and if fat and carb both come GIP is going to inhibit is that right now uh, very briefly about the pyloric stenosis sometimes there's pathological narrowing of pyloric area we call it pyloric stenosis pyloric stenosis pyloric stenosis narrowing of this may be due to congenital in some especially it's more common in male male infant they are born with hypertrophied or extra thick layer of pyloric muscle right so newborn males or infant male infants they may develop pyloric stenosis or pyloric stenosis may be seen in those patients who have uh, peptic ulcer for long time and peptic ulcer lead to inflammation and scarring if the scarring is very near to this area this scar become contracted and this area become narrow so inflammation and scarring of pyloric region due to peptic ulcer disease that will also produce stenosis thirdly unfortunately someone develop cancer in this area right malignancy and that makes this area narrow so these are all different causes of pyloric stenosis and usually what happens in pyloric stenosis when this area become narrow can stomach push the food forward or climb forward so basically a person whatever he eats 
person will vomit out and specific thing in this will be this vomiting will not have bile because bile is coming to duodenum and content of duodenum in this type of vomiting cannot come back because there is pyloric stenosis so we call it non bilious vomiting the vomiting which is produced in these patients is non bilious bile is not there any question up to this then another condition which is called gastroparesis gastroparesis is that stomach becomes semi paralyzed and it becomes very relaxed and it takes very long hours to empty itself gastroparesis what will happen to a patient with gastroparesis what will happen to you if your stomach keep on receiving the food and does not pass it forward you will develop abdominal discomfort in this area you will develop nausea and vomiting if you cannot move it forward you may throw it out throw it up is that right so nausea and vomiting you may develop sensation of bellotting here you may develop sensation of satiety you eat very little and feel you have eaten enough because your stomach is all the time full is that right these situations are seen in different mechanisms of gastroparesis any question class discuss